Ladies and gentlemen, we have a mystery to solve. It seems that X has gone missing. That's right, we need to find our favorite variable X. Now, it was last spotted in an equation headed south through Collinsville on its way to Airville. So to figure out its value, we're going to need our best algebra agents. Agent number one, you will need reciprocals. Agent number two, be ready to slap it with a log. Agent number three, grab the ace of base. And agent number four, pack up your best math magic. Are all algebra agents ready? Yes, sir. All right, then ready, set, solve. All right, so for our first equation, x is spotted in the base. Now, when x is in the base, you're going to want to isolate that exponent expression first. Basic algebra, of course, applies. You know you're going to add 6. You know you're going to divide by 3. But keep in mind that we're isolating that exponent expression first. So x to the 3 fifths uh, certainly is going to equal 2. Now, agent number 1 Get out your reciprocals because you're going to raise both sides to the reciprocal power. Whenever x is in the base, we raise both sides to the reciprocal power and we will have solved for x. Now, 2 to the 5 thirds, that's something that you can do on your calculator and give us that value to three decimal places. Just make sure you're typing that in carefully to get 3.175. So, when the variable's in the base, you want to definitely isolate first, but then use reciprocal powers. Now, be careful in a problem like this that you do recognize that the three-fifths is only applied to the x. Now, had there been parentheses around the three and the x, then the three-fifths would have applied to the three and the x. So, Careful what has the exponent. Careful what is considered the exponent expression. In this problem, it was only the x because that was right beside the exponent. Agent number one, ready to give this problem a shot. x to the fourth equals 100. Now, you say, Miss Naylor, this problem's too easy. Well, How'd you do? If you raise both sides to the reciprocal power, you're going to get x to the 3.162, aren't you? But if you did, you're not correct. Oh no, agent number one, what did you do wrong? You raised both sides to the reciprocal. And that indeed was the idea. But think about it, to raise both sides to the one fourth power is the same as doing the fourth root. And whenever you do an even root, Ah, you always get plus or minus. So we want to keep in mind that if the root is even, there's actually two numbers that satisfy the equation. Make sure you tuck that little tool into your tool belt, agent number one. Even roots will always give a plus or minus. Look. X has been spotted in the exponent. Agent number two, get ready. Get ready, agent number two, because first we're going to isolate the exponent expression. Yes, we know we're going to add two to both sides, but how do you solve for X when X is in the exponent? How do you solve for X when X is in the exponent? That's right. We're going to slap this equation with a log. In fact, we're going to slap both sides of the equation with a log. Look what happens when you do the log of both sides. Well, agent number two, by properties of logarithms, you're going to cause this exponent to come tumbling down. You're literally going to slap it down, and now we end up with x times the log of six. Now, the nice thing about multiplying by the log of six is that we can just divide it away. 
Now, when you divide both sides by the log of 6, you end up solving for x, which by a calculator will give you about 1.432. What's that you say, agent 2? You have a different way that you would have solved 6 to the x equals 13? You would have what? You would have changed it to a log. Well, that's right. You actually, by the definition of a log, could change this statement to be the log base 6 of 13. And agent number two, how do you solve? How do you evaluate the log base 6 of 13? Right, the change of base formula. The change of base formula says that I can divide by the log of 6. And agent number two, you're correct, because that'll be the exact same thing that we did using our algebra method. So, when the variable is in the exponent, when the variable is in the exponent, well, you always want to isolate, but then you're going to slap it with a log. And of course, when you slap both sides with a log, you cause that exponent to come tumbling down. Ready? Here's an equation to try on your own, agent number two. Look where x is. x is up in the exponent. But don't get too excited to slap it with a log. Make sure you always isolate that exponent expression first. Go ahead, give it a try. How'd you do, agent number two? You definitely want to divide first. It's a little preliminary step. That way we get e to the x minus 4 equaling 7.13. Now, slap it with a log, you say? That's correct, but you want to make sure you slap it with the correct log. If you have an e, you want to slap it with a natural log. Now, when you slap it with a natural log, you do cause this exponent to come tumbling down. It comes out front. But maybe even more significantly, the ln of e cancels. It cancels to be 1. So now your exponent is out in front. And we have the ln of 7, which you can do on a calculator. It comes out to be about 1.96. And all you have to do is add 4. And of course, you end up with 5.96. Now, before we move on, agents, be careful because we have two different situations here. First, x was spotted in the base. And when x is in the base, remember, you want to use reciprocals. You want to use reciprocal powers. But if x is in the exponent, now that's when you want to slap it with a log. All right. Are you ready to keep looking for x? It's been spotted. I just found it in a log equation. Now, agent number three, if x is in a log equation, well, just like all the other problems, we always want to isolate the heart of the problem. We always want to isolate the function. And in this case, we want to isolate the log. So that negative sign, it actually has to scoot over to the other side so that we now have a positive log which is equal to negative 3. All right, agent number 3. How are we going to get x out of that log? Don't say divide by log. Don't say that because it doesn't make any algebra sense. You're not multiplying by a log. So instead, we're going to use the ace of base. That's right, we're going to base both sides. And as long as we base both sides with the same base shown in our logarithm going to cancel out. We're going to cancel out the log. We're going to be left with just x plus 2. But now on this side of the equation, we have 4 to the negative 3 power. Ah, 4 to the negative 3 power. Well, by fractions, that would of course be 1 over 64. By decimals on our calculator, we would end up with this mismatch of numbers. But the key thing here is that you want to base both sides. It's called exponentiation. But I like to call it the ace of base. Of course, you still have to subtract 2 in this problem. And if we're working with decimals, which are actually fine, we would end up with negative 1.984. So when you have a log equation, now... 
you always want to make sure that you condense to a single log. You can't do what we just did if you have multiple logs, so we'd want to condense. That was already accomplished in this problem, so next, isolate the log. And then, exponentiate. Do the ace of base to both sides. And this is how you solve a log equation. So, we just spotted x again, agent 3. It's in a log. I know you want to do the ace of base. You want to base both sides. But hold on, hold on. You can't do multiple bases on one side. That's why we need to I condense the logs. We need to pull these logs together. That's right. How do you pull logs together that are being added? You have to multiply. You have to multiply the 5 and the x. Now, agent number three, get out your ace of base and base both sides. That's right, you base both sides, it cancels. You're left with 5x, e to the fourth power. Now, e to the fourth power is going to be 54. And all you got to do is divide that away on your calculator. When you divide by 5, we end up with 10. Good job, agent number three. Good job using that ace of base. Agent number three, we have another problem to do. This problem clearly has multiple logs, and yes, they need to be condensed. But remember, you always want to bring coefficients up as exponents before you pull these logs together to be one log. So we have to make sure it's one log, which remember, because it's subtraction, we're going to get a fraction. So we have to divide by the negative. We have to divide by the x squared. Now that you've successfully condensed into one log on each side, get out that ace of base. Wait a minute. There's no base. There's no base. Until we remember that it's the common log. It's a common base 10. So we're going to do a base 10 to both sides. And look, it actually cancels both logs, leaving us with 12 over x squared equaling 3. Ah, well, a little bit of algebra here would help us to rearrange and move some numbers around so that we can be looking at 4 equaling x squared so that x can equal plus or minus 2. Now, comment. If x is equaling plus or minus 2, we have to make sure that that satisfies the original equation. And we find out that when we plug negative 2 back into the equation that we end up with an illegal situation. That's right, you can't do the log of negative 2. Wait a minute, why can't you do the log of negative 2? Well, think about it with me. The log of negative 2 would be like asking yourself 10 to what power equals negative 2. There is no power that's going to give you a negative number. You can't do the log of a negative number. And so it turns out that even though we were being smart and got a plus or minus, we don't want to include the negative with this answer. So x equals 2. So if the variable's in the exponent, you slap it with a log. But if you already have a log, then you're going to do the ace of base. Now, agent number four, are you ready? Because if the variable is in both exponents, well, then we're going to need a little bit of magic. So follow my example. As we look at a problem where the variable is in both exponents. Now we have 3 to the 2x equals 7 to the x minus 1. It turns out that we still are going to slap both sides with a log. Because when you slap both sides with a log it always causes the exponent to come tumbling down. Now, when the exponent comes tumbling down, we just have a little different scenario here because we certainly have x on both sides and we have logs on both sides. Now, what you want to understand is that a log, whether it's the log of 3 or the log of 7, it's just a number. And so what can I do with a number that's in front of parentheses? Well, you can distribute it. You can distribute it. You just want to keep it in its log form 
makes it a lot easier to work with that number. So when I distribute the log of 7, when I multiply it, I now have x log of 7 minus the log of 7. Now, each of these x's have numbers beside them. The x on the left side has a 2 log 3 beside it. The x on the other side has got a log of 7 beside it. But if we put these x's together, if we put the variables on the same side, then we're one step away from being able to solve for x. Now I'm going to subtract the x log 7. I'm going to subtract that over. And now we're ready for a little magic. Well, it's actually not magic at all. It's just factoring. You see, if you factor out this x, if you factor out this x, you'll be able to have your equation in a form where x is by itself, where x has been taken out of those logs so that all I have to do is divide both sides by that factoring. And when we divide both sides by 2 log 3 minus the log of 7, get our calculators out, do a little bit of division very carefully, we should be able to find x. Make sure you try it. Make sure you try it. Don't make the first time you do this be uh, when you do it on the test or quiz, but we get about negative 7.74. So what do you think, agent number four? We still slap both sides with a log, but a little bit of magic. We thought about gathering our x's and ultimately factoring x out of the logs. How about this equation? Agent number four, e to the 2x minus 2e to the x plus 1 equals 0. Now remember, we don't want to do something silly like just try to take the log of everything. There's no algebra that says that you can individually take the log of each part of, any, of each term in an equation. Instead, you want to see something. You want to see that this equation has a hidden form. That's right, it's in the form of a trinomial. Do you see the trinomial? Let me help you see it, because if we let m equal e to the x, then we can very carefully change this equation to be m squared minus 2m plus 1. Now we have a trinomial, and a trinomial of this form can be solved with some simple factoring. That's right, if you factor this trinomial into m minus 1, m minus 1, you'll be able to find that m equals 1. Now be careful, m equals 1 is right, but it's not our final answer, because since e to the x equals m, that means e to the x equals 1. Now, agent number 4, you can slap both sides with a log. And if we take the log of both sides, we find out that x equals... Hey, wait a minute, I've seen that before. The log of 1. The log of 1 is always equal to 0. So, this problem requires a little careful observation that our original equation was the form of a trinomial. Now, if you miss that trinomial, it really has all to do with this square right here. Because when you have that square, you can write it as e to the x squared. And along with this linear term of e to the x, we have a perfect form of a quadratic trinomial, which then you can finish with factoring. Agents, I'm so very impressed with your ability to find x. We found it with reciprocals. We slapped it with a log. The ace of base. And a little bit of magic. So now that you have found the x, it's time to start your homework. Keep up the good work, agents. We'll see you next time.